Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today I will be showing you how to make your P3D look amazing, how to bring some new life into your simulator, how to make it brighter and uh, you will actually see everything in action because uh, all of these settings I will be showing you today, I use them in my own simulator so uh, I will show you what every uh, single application we will use today does. Uh, how to set it up, how to install it, and how to make it work properly. Uh, I divided uh, the video into five parts, so uh, you won't uh, get lost and maybe you can then skip some parts if you uh, use uh, any of these applications already. So uh, in the first two parts we will, uh, we will cover the shaders. So we will have Nf shade in the first part and reshade in the second part. Uh, and then uh, coming up in the third one we will have some scenery stuff, in the fourth one wetter stuff or wetter engine stuff and in the fifth one the P3D settings uh, itself uh, which is the most important part uh, basically to make everything uh, work and get the right balance between uh, the looks of the simulator and performance. So without further ado let's hop right into it. Alright guys so we are here in P3D V5. This is a vanilla installation, complete fresh installation of P3D V5. So no shaders in uh, the sim right now, no uh, reshade, no nf shade, nothing like that. We have just the vanilla sim and uh, I was surprised actually, it, it looks pretty good uh, out of the box, which uh, wasn't the case with uh, P3D V4 or uh, V3 for example, but this looks very good. Uh, but we can make it even better with uh, with the application with the applications I will show you today with the shaders and uh, everything. Uh, I will just quickly take a screenshot right here so we can uh, then compare the before shaders, after shaders, uh, kind of uh, state of the sim, so you can see what's the difference on the screen uh, where you will see like head-to-head -head comparison. So uh, this is how it looks, doesn't look that bad, but let's make it even better. Okay, so the first thing we will do is that we will set up EnfShade. Uh, EnfShade is actually a payware application. Uh, you can get it on Sim Market for just around seven euro or six and a half euro. So uh, it's nothing uh, too serious and I would definitely invest in this uh, application. Uh, in this uh, shader pack because um, it really gives your sim a fresh new look as you can see uh, the screenshots here uh, it's really worth it trust me so uh, I would definitely go for it uh, it's made by Toga Projects they make uh, uh, the application Envdir where uh, you have all their uh, all their add-ons basically they have Env sound and Env text for some texture stuff as well if you do not use the uh, enhanced uh, atmospherics. Uh, but we are using NF Shade today, so uh, you will need to uh, buy this and uh, install it. Okay, so after buying NF Shade, you will need to install the NVDIR application, which looks like this. It's really simple and uh, really easy to use but uh, we need to set it up a little bit so firstly we need to go into uh, the settings so let's click these uh, three lines here and go to application settings here you will need to select your active flight simulator so uh, in our case it's p3 dv5 so we can leave that as it is then you will need to set up the p3d folder and p3d backup folder uh, Simple as that, the P3D main lo uh, location basically and here the backup you can place it uh, wherever you want. I have it in the documents folder. Global quality, leave it at uh, custom I would say. Uh, here you can also turn on the Active Sky Cloud Art integration if you are using that or the Rex Skyforce integration. Uh, but I'm not using uh, any of those so I will leave this off. And here is the important part, uh, this is the NF shade settings, but uh, if you uh, can't find this, then go back into uh, the home page and click on NF shade, and you will get 
this page. Uh, first thing, we want to turn the shaders on, obviously, so if you do not have this on, click it on, turn it on, so uh, you have the shaders uh, turned on. Then the uh, like overall settings, uh, put it into high performance. I had it in high quality, but I experienced some <laughs> uh, pretty heavy FPS loss and um, performance uh, issues. So, as you can see with the high performance, the performance impact is very, very uh, little. So, go for that one definitely. Um, it's the best balance between performance and uh, visuals, I would say. And this is my uh, NF Shade settings. So, uh, feel free to uh, copy them if you want. I will just uh, go, I will just hover my mouse over uh, over every single of them so you can copy the values if you want or you can uh, move uh, around with the sliders and set it up for yourself, for your own like, uh, for, your, for your own eyes. And here at the very bottom, um, Enhanced atmospherics uh, I have uh, enabled because I use them in the simulator. I really like it So I will keep this on as well and When you are done with setting up and shade you can uh, click the three lines again to uh, pop this menu up again and You want to save your NVIDIA settings for sure. It will say saved here So that's done and now uh, if you have the paths set up right here correctly, you should be able to press the green button, install to sim, it will perform like a, a 360 uh, circle and then it will say installed here. And uh, that's the end shade installation done. If you don't like what uh, you did here, then you can always disable and restore uh, the, sh uh, the shaders, so you can do it right here. And let's uh, go into the flight simulator and let's check what kind of impact that made. Okay, so we have Enf shade shaders loaded in the sim now. Uh, bear with the sim, it may take some time for uh, the first startup to load everything up. So, <laughs> you know, don't freak out when you see no ground textures or no airplane for some time. Bear with it, it will definitely come up. Uh, back as uh, before and uh, as you can see uh, now we have uh, brighter colors on the scenery just a bit and we have also uh, much darker shadows on the aircraft itself so NFJ definitely doing its job here and uh, let's uh, jump into the second part and that's reshade Okay, so to install Reshade, we will need to download the latest Reshade setup. We can find that on the reshade.me. Uh, uh, all the links will be down in the description below, so you can check, uh, check it there. Uh, the site looks like this. You just need to press the download button here. It will scroll all the way down to the download section and here you will download the latest uh, reshade setup which is 4.9.1 at the moment. You can see the uh, version when it was released and stuff like that uh, right here as well. So after you downloaded the setup you will get this setup with this uh, lovely icon right here and maybe you're wondering what is this right here and that's my reshade preset so uh, in this video I will also show you uh, how to uh, install how to select and how to use these presets and if you do not like mine like this one for example you can create your own I will also show you how to do that but now let's install reshade itself so once you have this uh, setup downloaded, you just double click it to start the uh, to start the application. Now Reshade will ask you which game you want to install Reshade to. You j so you just click uh, on this uh, button and you select b3d.exe in your b3d folder. And when you have b3d selected, you need to select the rendering API which is uh, Direct3D 10 slash 11 slash 12. So you click this and as you can see, uh, my reshade uh, installation is already found on this PC. So uh, I will just click update. And here you can select uh, various uh, effects you want to install. 
uh, into uh, your application, in our case, uh, P3D. So definitely uh, install the standard effects. I don't think you can even uh, unclick it. Yes, yeah, so just leave this checked uh, and you can then select other effects if you want as well. For uh, To make my preset work, which will be also in the description down below, you will need only the standard effects. So uh, yeah, I would install only these. If you want to experiment, experiment with other effects, you can select others as well. Then you just click OK and the installation will begin and then you will just exit the application when everything is done. Alright, so after we put the reshade preset into our P3DV5 main folder, we can hop into our flight simulator. Uh, I've loaded the exact same scenario again with the same view. And uh, since reshade is now installed in the simulator, uh, the default shortcut for it is home. So we can press home. Uh, I have the shortcut already set to shift F2. So uh, when you go to settings, you can set all the all the settings, all the overlay keys and uh, effect toggle keys uh, uh, right here as well. That's actually pretty important. So I would uh, definitely set these two up and then definitely set the screenshot path as well and select the screenshot key so you can take screenshots whenever you want. And uh, if we go back to home, this is like the main page, the main preset page. So what you need to do is to click this uh, little bar right here. And here is your P3DV5 folder. And you need to select uh, the preset, uh, our preset or my preset is Runway Inside 1. So you select that one. And then you press select. And uh, since my effects are disabled, I need to press the enable button. And as you can see, the sim with my preset is now a lot brighter. And uh, if I close reshade right now, it works very well with the end shade shaders that uh, make the shader, uh, the shadows, sorry, that make the shadows uh, a lot darker. So this is without reshade and end shade only. And this is end shade plus my reshade preset. So I think this looks very good. This is how. Uh, I set up my sim, how it looks at the moment. So uh, feel free to use uh, my preset. If you want to make any tweaks to it, then you can uh, go to the reshade overlay once again. In my case, it's Shift F2, by default it's home. And if you, for example, want to edit the ambient light, this is how you can enable and disable that, um, that effect. You here down here, you will get the ambient light.fx um, like the setting bar. So you can play with the settings, uh, with the sliders here as you want. And it will automatically uh, save the settings or the changes you made into the preset. So uh, that's very clever from Reshade. And you can therefore easily play with the, uh, with the presets and create your own ones. So I think my preset looks very good. It works very well with the NF shade shaders. So uh, I think this is done. So uh, we can now jump over to the third part of this video. Okay, so the third part is ORBX scenery. If you go to your internet browser and type ORBX direct and then go to products and then to global range, you will get these add-ons. Uh, I find them really cool. There is, uh, yeah, basically nothing can beat uh, these add-ons. It's basically, yeah, the world becomes much more realistic with uh, the base pack. The base pack is like a must-have add-on, really. It may look a bit as expensive. Yeah, it is, I know, but it it does its thing and it's really, really nice. So this one is definitely the one to start with. And uh, if you want to expand then even more, you can buy the open LCs. These are regional. So uh, here is one, for example, for Europe. Uh, it's very, uh, very lovely in Germany, for example. There it looks very good. Or uh, North America as well. And then from RBX, I use the buildings HD. 
uh, that gives uh, the buildings new textures, they look much more realistic and uh, it gives them more of a 3D uh, look, so this is definitely an add-on to consider. And then I use Terraflora uh, Terra V2, which uh, is basically add-on for vegetation and uh, it's the, it does its job very well as well. Um, they have the seasonal textures as well, so you can see uh, various seasons here. The colors are absolutely beautiful. You can see the trees covered by snow as well, or in summer. So uh, this one is definitely very good as well. So consider the RBX scenery add-ons. The fourth part is about weather engines. Uh, I believe there are some freeware weather engines, but I would definitely uh, recommend to invest and go into Active Sky P3D if you do not have it already. It's a very popular weather engine uh, for P3D. Uh, I use the P3D V5 and P3D V4 versions since I use the V5 uh, P3D. Uh, and uh, it's developed by Hi-Fi Simulations or Simulation Technologies, so you can buy it on their website and um, not on their website sorry basically on one of uh, the dealers website so they have it on sim market as well just as the nf shade so you can buy it for uh, just under 50 euros so yeah a very good weather engine it really uh, renders uh, the clouds well the uh, enhanced atmospheric volumetric clouds so that's why i like it very very much so i would uh, recommend using this uh, weather engine as well okay so this is how active sky for p3d looks like and here are some options or settings i recommend changing or adjusting so that's in the sim text message uh, options i like to turn all of these off because they are just pretty annoying when uh, you are flying they pop up very often so turn these off if you don't want to be distracted by them also there is like a very loud thunderstorm uh, going on when the application is starting so make sure to turn that off as well to not get your ears raped every single time when you are starting the application and then I recommend changing the download interval from 15 to 10 or uh, 5 minutes to get always the right weather, the active weather at your current location. And last but not least we have the P3D settings. So hop into display and um, you can check my uh, PC setup or my PC hardware in the description down below. So make sure to adjust your settings to your hardware, right? So for example, if you have a better hardware, hardware than I have, you can set the settings even higher than I have. If you uh, at the other side have a slower system or just a bit slower, just a uh, lower grade hardware, then I would recommend uh, starting on a, on a lower settings and building your way up as you test everything to not get a massive performance loss. I use these settings, uh, FXAA on, definitely AA uh, two times MSAA. Uh, the, the dynamic texture streaming is on as well. Texture resolution on ultra. And just a little tip for smoother experience, turn the V-Sync to on, then enable triple buffering and set the target frame rate to unlimited. This will give you much better experience, I find this trick very good. And we can now hop over to world and here, uh, yeah, consider your hardware. Again, I'm saying this because it is very important. If you have better hardware than I have, you can play with these settings, set them to uh, maybe a higher level. But as well, if you have a lower grade hardware, lower uh, tier PC, then please start a bit lower and make your way up so you do not experience something very bad. Uh, I like to... Uh, set the water detail to ultra because i really like the water in p3d i don't know why actually <laughs> but yeah then definitely enable a bathymetry because it it just looks it looks very good 
and um, all the reflections uh, are turned on here as well. Then I have the enhanced atmospherics turned on as well. I have the volumetric class resolution set to low because I think it doesn't make that much of a difference and they still look amazing. Uh, then I have the god rays turned on, windshield effects, everything right here is uh, as it is. So feel free to copy my settings. Uh, once again, mind your hardware and everything will be just fine. And we can move on to lighting. These are my lighting options. As you can see, everything is set to auto. Uh, make sure to turn off the auto exposure because it doesn't work that well, really. So, yeah, it makes your... At certain situations, it makes your cockpit very dark. In others, very bright. So, I don't use this. I find it very buggy and stuff. Uh, make sure to turn on the dynamic lighting because... Um, Today's uh, sceneries, they or airport sceneries, I should say, have dynamic lighting and it looks very good. So turn that on. And uh, moving on to shadows, I have them uh, set to medium and draw distance to high. And basically all the shadow receiving and casting stuff turned on apart from clouds because then I experienced some weird uh, shadows going on on my aircraft and the scenery. So just mind the clouds, maybe it is fixed already, I don't know, but uh, yeah, just be careful about this option. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if uh, you like uh, your sim now, <laughs> after installing all the applications, all the shaders, all the weather engines, and also applying my P3D settings. Uh, if you found something which looks even better than uh, my sim, then let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, my P3D is a uh, still moving environment, so I would like to experience, uh, experiment myself. So let me know definitely if you uh, found something interesting. And uh, I hope uh, this video helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care. See you.